Hello, comic fans. Here's Earl Grey. Um, as Ed Brubaker uh, laid out in his afterword, he and his partner in crime, Sean Phillips, um, were quite exhausted after finishing uh, Fatal. And so he looked for a bit easier story that he um, can create together with the amazing colorist uh, Elizabeth Brightweiser. And so he thought a simple uh, story about a um, serial killer would be a nice break. But eventually they wound up doing a pretty dense and complicated 20 issue run called Kill or Be Killed, eventually call, uh, collected here in this beautiful hardcover tome. Uh, the deluxe edition that I have the privilege to hold in my hands right here. And this is really a nice book. Um, if they should have included every um, art for these essay, essays that uh, were delivered with the single issues, I don't know because these are completely unrelated to uh, the story itself. But well, it's nice to have them, of course, and uh, we have of, uh, here the cover illustrations, which are kind of neat. And since they are not always related really to the chapters, it's okay to um, put them in the back of the book and um, divide the chapters just with this, this kind of red page which I think is quite important to give you a reading rhythm or make clear here one issue, one chapter ended and the next starts. As you can see, I'm dancing a bit around the real subject, which is of course the story here. Um, and yeah, I've read the story, uh, the, uh, whole, all these 20 issues in two and a half days, which is quite quick, especially for me, uh, who are, I'm a pretty slow reader, but it's difficult to really pinpoint what I liked about the story and maybe some kind of issues that I had. And this is letter <laughs> is due to this main character here, uh, Dylan. And Dylan is quite a normal uh, average guy. Uh, student with love problems. Um, he rents a flat together with this Mason guy and Mason is in love with his uh, secret crush or more or less secret crush. So he wound up in a love triangle and this leads uh, him to commit suicide. Uh, so this is not your average problem, I know. Um, but it shows how vulnerable and how sensitive this guy here actually is and it makes it more even more questionable how uh, he wound up eventually killing as a killing machine a kind of punisher uh, type of guy here uh, because this is no spoiler we know this right from uh, the very first pages that this is our guy dylan as well and killing off here um guys cold-blooded even though he just wants to kill just bad people uh, so he is really there yeah, this punisher guy um, killing with a good conscience so to speak uh, and this pretty old vigilante problem pops up are you allowed to put yourself above the law and you're not allowed, just quite frankly, that's nobody uh, should do so. This is pretty easy question, I think, and easily answered. But uh, even with all these um, douchebags and gangsters and evil people running around the world, even if you try to convince me uh, 20 issues here, that there's maybe a a bit of leeway and even when a demon tells you so it's still not allowed it bores me with batman when he always says uh, i 
can't kill him because it's not allowed to kill him. Of course, of course, it's not allowed to kill anybody. <laughs> but uh, yeah, in a in a Batman in Gotham, in a Batman setting in Gotham, it should be allowed because Joker is a comic book character that always escapes the prison and and kills a ridiculous amount of people afterwards. This is, of course, not the real world, and this is comic world, and in this comic setting, it should be allowed to kill Joker, eventually. No question asked, but in the real world, it should not be allowed. So, um, plus we have um, this unreliable narrator perspective, which carries us through the story, which there were some kind of strange loops. Uh, Ed Brubaker pulls off these loops and repetition, uh, repetitions quite easily and, and gracefully in a way. Um, but still, we always follow this pretty annoying guy, at least for me, after some issues I had. I wanted to read the story, but I was pretty pissed by, by this wimp always excusing his deeds and um, instead of, yeah, just shut, keep your mouth shut for one second and um, and um, think of what, of what you have done just uh, the day before. Now he keeps on talking, talking, which is of course necessary because he leads us through the story. Uh, but you see maybe my problems that I have with this kind of story uh, where you have to, yeah, to relate to the, the main douchebag here and uh, which makes it complicated because for uh, some pages you really can relate to him. He's not the worst of guys and he has this cute and, and pretty nice girlfriend uh, and you want at some points you really want to end the story here good for him if, against all the odds and against all the people that he have killed before and, and uh, stuff like that. On the bottom line it's of course a good sign that you are able to and you should make all these thoughts and ponderings after or while reading the story here. Uh, it makes you think, really. And um, whether you want to read another, uh, is it good or bad to be a vigilante story afterwards? That's a different question. Um, but it it asks the right uh, right questions and. I got the impression that even Ed Brubaker uh, is not finished up with this character, so he still ponders uh, what's what's with this guy here that he uh, uh, acts in the way that he acts. Uh, Ed Brubaker puts him in the story and um, let lets him um, act after his own rules, after Dylan's rules, and. In a way, he kept that logic throughout the story, which is great. And by the way, in talking of great, uh, Sean Phillips is really great as usual. And the colors from Miss Brightweiser here, you see sometimes uh, when the new criminal book is discussed and we see the great colors from uh, Sean Phillips' son, Jacob Phillips, still there are some people who uh, say, wow, we miss uh, Miss Brightweiser's colors, and here you can see why, because she's just on on a different level uh, in, in terms of her colors and the structures she uses precisely in each and every panel. The color pal palette is exceptional. Um, you can look really literally everywhere in this book and you see fantastic uh, coloring throughout. Uh, so a lot of good character moments and even if I had some problems with the main and then the believability, uh, if this is word, of um, in, in terms of the main character Dylan, the side characters were uh, 
the, his girlfriend Kira and the other girlfriend and the cop, the female cop and his um, uh, the Mason, his friend, the the, the flashbacks uh, to his youth and um, uh, the 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 history that is provided uh, around Dylan, his family and all the world that he lives in uh, is so believable and plausible that it really makes up for some questions that you have uh, with the main character. There are a lot of great character moments in the story and I love the story quite a lot, but I have to say that I like uh, their a recent run, a criminal volume, whatever it is, thir uh, three or four, um, even more, because there the char the story is divided more up to all these different characters. Like Dylan in this book, they're all flawed, of course, they're the criminals, um, but you don't have to follow one character for 20 issues, which was maybe the the real difficulty uh, for Ed Brubeck and Sean Phillips to pull off uh, in the story and they managed it um, quite good I have to say but it can be a bit distressing if you're reading, reading it in a short amount of time. Um, so wonderful book and in case you actually the cover should have should be hold this way when you look at the background so it has this kind of nice dynamic. Um, anyhow, happy holidays to you all and uh, fantastic 2020, or let's say a better 2020 than that it was uh, 2019 for all of you. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.